The Galapagos Archipelago is located approximately 600 miles off the coast of continental Ecuador in the Pacific Ocean. It is comprised of more than 125 islands, islets and rocks, which are most famously known for the visit Charles Darwin made in 1835. His visit is well documented in his book The Voyage of the Beagle, and it is on these islands that many assume his evolutionary theory was first coined, leading him to write The Origin of Species, published in 1859. It is widely thought that his evolutionary theory was sparked by the finches, aptly named Darwin's finches, that inhabit the islands due to their variability in beak morphology. However, this is a very common misconception. Whilst visiting the Galapagos, Darwin assumed that most of the finches were of the same species, failing to appreciate the close relationship that we now know are different species. The specimens Darwin collected whilst he was in the Galapagos were sent off to the British ornithologist John Gould in 1837. Gould noticed that many of the species had vastly different beak sizes and shapes and thus helped him classify 13 individual species. Today we recognise around 15 endemic species on the Galapagos Islands, from the abundant small ground finch to the critically endangered mangrove finch. Many of the species are similar in terms of their size, shape and colour, however there are several differences observable in their habitat diet preferences, and most notably, their beak morphology. The last common ancestor of Darwin's finches is likely to have arrived from South America a few million years ago. Over time, they migrated to the different islands, and the different populations then became isolated and consequently subjected to different environmental pressures, such as resources and habitats. Each of the islands within the Galapagos archipelago have different environments, weather systems, and habitats. Isabella and Fernandina are arid, hostile islands, while Santa Cruz and San Cristobal have quite humid, almost tropic-like habitats. Over time, the populations of finches have adapted to survive in these niches, leading to adapted divergence between the populations, ultimately forming new species. Exposure to these varieties of conditions explains why some finch species are found on almost all the islands, such as the small and medium ground finch whereas woodpecker finches and mangrove finches are only found on one or two. The finches provide an excellent example of adaptive radiation, as each species has a beak morphology that corresponds to their ability to exploit a certain food source. For instance, this male vegetarian finch has a large, broad beak designed for eating buds, insects and large seeds, whereas a small ground finch has a small, finer beak for eating smaller, softer seeds and potentially small insects. These niche specialisations are observed in almost every species and are defining features within Darwin's finches that are likely to have occurred during population divergence. These evolutionary pathways have been ongoing for many millions of years and are key to the success of this group of birds. However, due to the ever-growing influence of man, things might be changing. As both the native population and the number of tourists continues to grow on the islands each year, there is an inherent need for more food. Whether this be through an increase in agricultural land or imported produce, the food available to endemic species is becoming more prevalent. It has previously been suggested that foods introduced by humans will result in a reduced need for highly specialised beaks specific to certain diets. Research being carried out on the islands working with the Charles Darwin Research Station is consistently showing that beak sizes are being affected, most likely due to the abundance of easily accessible foods. In some species, particularly the Geospizers genus, a reduction in the need for a specialised beak means that the natural selection pressures are no longer acting on the birds. Consequently, divergence that has occurred over many millennia may in fact be reversing. Subsequently, Geospizer species are reconverging as there is significant overlap between niches, thus giving rise to hybrids that are essentially new species. Much research has looked at the potential effects, with some studies already observing the formation of new species. Here are just a few examples of the type of research that has looked at human impacts on Darwin's finches. It is well known that humans are significantly impacting ecosystems, and these findings again show that it can happen over a very short period of time. However, it does beg the question of what the future holds for Darwin's finches. Will we see total convergence of the species, or perhaps isolated populations, of these new hybrids? Only time will tell.